Hello everybody, how are you doing today? You know, there's one thing that I always wanted to do on this model car channel, and that is to build a 125th scale garage diorama. And you know, I've already kind of started to do that because I did make a video where I built a little 1930s toolbox, which you can check out right here. And I've also built the ICM 1910 female mechanics and the Henry Ford and company. But the female mechanics, you can check out that video right here. And I do have those AMT garage series uh, models, the uh, like the get on up and uh, weekend wrenching and those ones, as well as Fujimi figures and a whole bunch of other things. So what I think I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you something cool that my wife got me for my birthday. This was back in May. <laughs> I know, I was working on my shed over the summer, so I kind of got behind. But what this is, is this is one of those Mastercraft little shelving units. These are all plastic shelves. I still have the wrap on here. I haven't even taken it off. So what I'm going to do is gather up all these little 125th scale tools and things that I have. And I'm going to label these drawers and I'm going to put each of those 25th scale tools into this. And this is going to be my garage uh, plastic bin box. So let's go down to the bench and see all the stuff that I've been collecting over the years to build up some garage dioramas. So the first thing that's really going to help me get organized is this. These are multi-use labels that I picked up at the dollar store for $1.25, but basically they're tiny little rectangular stickers so I can write on the sticker and then stick it on the drawer so I know what's inside. Here we have the accessories that came with different model kits over time and you can see that a lot of them are really cool and things that you could use in a garage diorama or any diorama for that matter. So what we have here are custom tools. This is from the AMT 1963 Chevrolet Impala kit which is still on the market today. So you get like screwdriver, ball peen hammer, uh, wrench, a bunch of different pliers and then we also have the paddles here for bodywork. You got a two-piece television, disc brakes, jack stand, a drive-in tray for your drive-in restaurant, trophy, a bunny, and a four-piece record player. Now these are the ones in the 49 Mercury, also from AMT. There's that ball peen hammer again, pair of pliers. We have adjustable wrench or adjustable spanner, as uh, Pete would call it, over at Pete's Model Car Customs. Actually, Pete kind of got me rekindled on the garage thing when he showed that recent video he has of the little case that he's going to use to build a garage in. So hey, I should do something there. Maybe Pete and I can uh, build these together. He does his over in England and says, hey, check out Trevor's, and I do mine over here and say, check out Pete's. I don't know. It's an idea. Collaboration. Anyway, what we have here, we also have a tire iron, the old star type. We have the bumper jack here, as well as the jack handle and a wheel lug wrench. This is real early, uh, early car, <clears throat> what do you call it, um, car accessory stuff that would be in the back of the car, you know, in case you have a breakdown or whatever. We have the pistons here, which is really an interesting thing. Those would go good on a bench. We also have a crankshaft. I've got an engine display stand, sort of a V-shaped 50s concept. And then we have a big piston trophy with a trophy base. And then down here, this is from AMT's uh, 1965 Chevy Wagon. This is a spare wheel we have here with Goodyear slicks on it. But what we also have are these car ramps. And these are two pieces with the bent metal with the, I guess it's a waffle pattern, and then the supports down below. Another cool thing I have to build garages with is this Dykes Automobile and Gasoline Engine Encyclopedia. I actually inherited this off my uncle, and at one point in time he was the fifth smartest man in all of Canada. He took a test in school, and that's what they determined. So as a prize, they gave him this book, and I ended up inheriting it. Now this Dykes Encyclopedia comes from 1926, and they have a lot of cool things in here, like how to build a bench for repairing carburetors. And this is what they used back in the 20s, and it even gives dimensions like 44 inches from here to here, 48 over here. 
and then the little pan hanging out and how high up the pan is. There's a tank here to put some air in the carburetor or something, if I remember this right. And then we have a vise here. There's all kinds of drawings like this all throughout the book. Here's another cool illustration for a homemade electrical test stand. This is for testing all the electronics in your car from 1926 and earlier, of course. We've got like light bulbs up here. We've got voltmeters, the little tray for parts, um, all kinds of neat things. A generator rack for testing your generator in your car, fuses, charger switch, magnet charger, and then drawers underneath for storage. Here we have an illustration from the Dykes Encyclopedia of a chemical rectifier. And this is to test batteries, I believe. And what we have here is the battery itself on the bench and then the rectifier here. And you put water through it to keep it cool. And they've got all these little test lights and that tells you what's going on. Here we have a layout for a shop battery and electrical repair workshop from the Dykes Encyclopedia. Even with dimensions in here, 12 feet by 19 feet and 7 foot by 12 foot for this area in here and there. And all the different things on the benches that you needed to rebuild batteries and to do electrical work in your car. And here we have the tools and setup for that battery and electrical repair shop on the opposite page. Here's some of the equipment for repairing tires back in the day. This is a Shaler Electric Vulcanizer Type ACE. You can see the tire being put on here with uh, the repair going on, vulcanizing, so probably getting some new rubber patch in here. And over here we have an Akron Williams Type 6F Steam Vulcanizer. So there's all the unit down here in order to vulcanize the tires using steam. Over here we have the Shaler Steam Vulcanizer Type NPR number 41. And you can see all the different ways that this thing repairs a tire. And then if I move the book up a little bit, down below we've got some of the tools to repair the tires with. Now if you want to do a radiator repair shop from the 20s, here we have the table for that with a couple little ghost radiators showing you how they fix them. There is a little tray down here that this radiator fits on. Actually, it's these two little clips. And uh, then we also have like a gas furnace and all of the different air and water pipes up here. And that's so you can solder up your holes in your radiator and test them with the water. Here we have a car wash station from 1926. And you can see the guy here using the hose to clean down probably an old Dodge or something. It also even tells you to lubricate the rear springs and all that sort of thing. And then here's another version of that with the hose being overhead instead of on the ground. And again, over here, the same sort of thing. Also included in this book is a layout for garage and shop buildings. And it shows you here a floor plan of the garage showing location of department, skylight and arrangement of tools and lamps. Another great thing in this book is a conversion chart showing the decimal tables, and this goes up into 30 seconds, I believe. So when you're scaling things down in 1 25th scale from the actual article, and you're using a calculator and you come up into these weird decimal places, you can actually see what the measurements would be in inches. So like, for example, 0.25 is a quarter inch. Well, we know that, but what if you have something like this number here comes up. <laughs> Let me just move in here. 0.453125. Well, what the heck is that, right? So you just go across and it looks like 29 sixty fourths. Oh, it goes into 64, so that's even smaller. So these charts are invaluable because when you're scaling things down, these will give you the exact measurements. Here's a picture of some of the strange ways they used to jack up a car back in the 20s. Can you imagine going underneath this thing? <laughs> like, you cut the car up at an angle. You really would have to chalk those wheels in or, you know, well, it looks like it, it almost has a, like a tow winch up here. So maybe that's what's holding the car in. But man, if that ever got away on you and you're under here at an angle <laughs> and these legs shot out or something, you have no chance. <laughs> Here's another illustration of the old way that they used to do things, which is really <laughs> what I would call risky, even more risky than the image from before. 
What they have is a block and tackle supported on a metal beam up above, and they block and tackle the front axle up and lift it way up here, and then they apply these jack stands underneath. And the height of these stands are the height of a man standing up. And there's nothing back here holding the car on, only the block and tackle up in the ceiling. So how would you like to work underneath that? Let us know in the comments section down below. This is another illustration that I like out of the book. What you have is an elevator that lifts the car up onto this ramp. And this is a ramp for the serviceman to go underneath the car and work on the car standing up. Here's another little illustration we have of a gas station. And the way this is built is sort of on a corner. So here you have a fire hydrant for the corner, post boxes, I guess, or it says posts, maybe it's just metal posts. There's the curb. So this is the road coming in here on a curve. And there's a kerosene uh, pump and then a couple of gas pumps, different gases. And then here you have a rack for greasing underneath the car. And the building is actually right here. It's sort of a, not a rectangle, what is it? Almost like a triangle without the point down here. And uh, <clears throat> then there's water, a water tank in here as well. And the sign for the gas station is here. So this one, I did try to figure out some measurements, but I don't know if I got it right. That's using the little scale down here, feet. And uh, somewhere my markings line up with that, I think. Okay, not those ones, but <laughs> some of them. I think it's this. Yeah, there it is. So from that, I was able to figure out like how far away these are from the sign and all that. And I came up with some measurements. But I don't know if I'm going to build this because, again, these are really huge when you uh, build them all in scale. Here's another little cool thing in the garage element of this book. This is how to build a service truck using a Model T or any kind of truck you want. And what it shows is you basically take a sedan or whatever and you chop it off in the back. And then you build up this neat little back end with rails and a little uh, step in here and all kinds of cool things. This chart tells you the dimensions based on the car you have. So there's Hudson, Cadillac, Studebaker, Ford, Chevrolet, Dodge, Chalmers, Hupmobile, and Page. And then it says, okay, uh, figure A, 70 inches on the Hudson, or 60 on the Dodge. On the Ford, it's 48 inches and up. You know, those sort of things. So we'll take a look at where those numbers are in the next shot here. So here we have our service truck, and those are the numbers. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, and the letters for the dimensions. So there's A, and A on a Hupmobile here, or on a Hudson, pardon me, here is 70 inches, but on the Ford it is 48 inches because Ford is a smaller thing. The Hupmobile is 47, so that's even smaller. And then there's the end dimensions, and this is all on the top. Oh, and these numbers are down here. So there, we ha right behind the seat, we have the tire tools. And then we have pumps for number two. Pumps, blocks, and heavy tools. Number three is extra tubes and tire repair. Four is bolts, nuts, and small repair parts. Five is a gas can. Six is the oil can. Seven is bolts, nuts, and screws. Eight is small repair parts. Nine is tools. Ten is towing dolly, shovel, axe, picks, bars, battery, and spare tires, etc. Here's an upper three-quarter rear drawing of the pickup truck. And there you can see an opening door here, the towing link, and all those rails, and the back behind the seat. And here we have another view of it, and this would be where you would put your tank, as well as the shovel and the axe in behind. Here we have a pickup truck based on an old Cadillac, which would be a vintage Cadillac. But as you can see, there's the Cadillac front end. This would have been a touring car or something. And then here the guy built his own little back panel. This actually comes up and is sloped right up into here. And then goes down. And you can see the winch he's got on here, as well as the back with the towing cable. 
So speaking of the modern pickup truck, if you want to do something unique, I saved these instructions from the Billy Carter pickup truck that I got from my friend James. I had to give it back, but I scanned these images into my computer. So what we have is a flat board here and then a bunch of things like the six packs of beer going on here and a bunch of cool things. And this would be a really cool little platform to make for some of your own pickup trucks. Continue on with the service truck with that bed in the back. You can see they've got two gas tanks going in here on either side, as well as these two-piece tires going down here, and they added in stakes to the side of the truck to make it a stake bed type of truck. And here's how it looks once it's completed, and they're adding on the air horns here, as well as these side mirrors with the CB radios, and the little steps onto the side of the truck. Finally, they drop in a two-piece fire extinguisher and a two-piece floor jack into the back of the bed. So we're not really here to look over the Dykes Encyclopedia, but I thought maybe those images would help somebody, maybe even Pete, with his model. Now what I have here is my spare box. This is where I've got all my garage stuff stored in. Nothing to do with Don the Snake Prudhomme. Now I got one of these little puppet guys. <laughs> this is Harry. Harry Monster. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so I've got a bunch of stuff in here. There's a whole bunch of these little tools. There's a... Uh, this is some of the race car stuff. There's impact wrenches in here as well. Boy, I forgot about all this stuff. I got a race car driver. All sorts of really cool things. So let's take a look at these bit by bit and see what I got. Now before I begin showing you the 125th scale model kit tools, I thought I would start with the tool boxes. And as you can see, I've got quite a few. I do believe these came from the Beverly Hillbillies kit. I'm not sure where the other things came from, so... If you need to know, <laughs> I'm not the one to tell you. But this one is pretty cool. It's got the angled top to it. There's a lot of sink marks in this one, which I don't know if I should fill in or leave there as dents. But see that, that top of the toolbox? It's the only one I have that's like that. The rest are all flat across the top. So that one's pretty cool. Uh, let's just move these out of the way. So I've got this little narrow one as well. And most of them actually open up and are hollow inside. So the model kit tools you could put in here and put a bunch of glue down there so they don't go anywhere. There's a red one here. Got a little bit uh, sanded on the edge. So must have been trying to correct some problem with it. But again, it's uh, nice and open. A lot of these have the hinges molded in place on the back. It's just too bad that they don't actually open. You know, like a hinge. Um, I don't know, you could put a little wire in there or something, but it seems a bit complicated. It also has the handles on the end, which is really nice. I think the yellow one is the same as the red one. Uh, looks quite like it, maybe from different years. Yeah, it's the same one. Different uh, molded color for sure. This is one my dad built up for something he was going to use, but then never used it. See his gold pinstriping on there? <laughs> got the locks. I, oh, I think this is again the Beverly Hillbillies. Looks like it might have been from there. This one is cool because when you open it up, it's actually a secondary tool tray in here. And I do believe there's tools molded into the bottom. Yep, there is. Don't know if you can see them. There we go. Sort of. Yeah, right there. Catch the light. And there's two big sink marks right in the corners. But overall, I mean, these are the kind of cool things that you have when you go collecting through your parts box to see what's going on. These would look great in the back of a pickup truck or on the bench or wherever you want to put them in your diorama. Here's a stacked toolbox that I got from one of the model kits. And again, this is a really cool one. I did build this up to look like a 30s toolbox. And if you want to check out that video, here it is scrolling across or right here. So here I have a bunch of loose tools from all over the place. I'm not really sure which models these are all connected to because, of course, they're off the parts trees. But there's things in here like screwdrivers, ball peen hammers. There's a pair of pliers as well as various wrenches. This is a little torque wrench. It's one of those ones where you torque it and the bottom arm kind of clicks out a little bit and moves along the needle here. 
we also have a hacksaw there's a tire iron and then i've got these this one's really kind of neat it's in a suitcase i don't know where the other side of the suitcase is uh, which is unfortunate but it's got all the tools inside there like a tool chest and then this one somebody glued all the tools onto this piece of fabric here <laughs> And I do believe this is supposed to be a roll-out mat that's in the back of somebody's car trunk. But here you got a pair of vice grips as well. Here we have another set of tools. These ones came from the Revell 1953 and 1954 Chevrolets. And you can see they've got metal cutters or metal shears here. Another pair of pliers. Here we have the twist end wrench, so you've got one end that's sort of at a 45 degree angle and the other end that's straight on. Then we have these box wrenches as well. Uh, not sure, I think, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but at any rate, there's a tire iron, and then they have these four things here. I never figured out what those are either. Then this one, I do believe, came from the 63 Chevy. Those are two wrenches, the pliers, the adjustable spanner. <laughs> as Pete would call it, adjustable wrench. We also have a screwdriver, ball peen hammer, and these are paddles for doing lead work. Here's another cool little bunch of accessories that I found. And these I think were in that NASCAR kit on its sprue. But what we have is a wagon and I couldn't resist. I had to build this. It's not painted yet. It's just glued together. But look at the little wagon wheels and up underneath you got the front of it and the little rear axle in the back. That's pretty cool. And this little box here, it gets even cooler because this is a cooler. Look at the beer in there or whatever, the pop, whatever you want. And the sides, this is uh, typical of an early 80s type of cooler. And you can just put it on the wagon. And don't forget that there's all the Coca-Cola bottles and all those Coca-Cola kits that they're releasing. You also get a Coca-Cola vending machine or various ones because there's one in the 53 Ford that's rounded and the one in the 77 Ford which is rectangular. So again, always look out for this kind of stuff for your dioramas. Here we have the Coca-Cola machine from the 1977 Ford van, as well as two of the Coke crates, which are in all those Coca-Cola kits. Again, really cool stuff, and will add a lot of detail to that garage diorama. The other thing I found was all these car batteries. And remember a long time ago I did a video on car batteries? It'll be up here. Here we have the chrome pistons from the 49 Merc. I broke one accidentally, a <laughs> connecting rod. We also have the one for the trophy and the crankshaft. And another great source for a crankshaft is AMT's 1958 Chevrolet. And if you're looking for like complete engines and in pieces that are really well detailed, check out the Revell kits, like the Revell 57 Chevy, the one that's now the Atlantis 57 Chevy. That thing has a full-on rip-down engine with valve covers, with the valves in the head, and the crankshaft molded in the center of it, and the thin walls of the engine block, and all that casting stuff. It looks amazing. Here's another bunch of neat little weird parts. These are voltmeters or battery testers or something, because there's little uh, voltmeter gauges down here. Amps and... Uh, What's the other? Ohm's resistance or something. I also have this little telephone here. And this is a CB radio from AMT's 1953 Ford pickup truck. Here's some race car parts I have from another sprue that someone gave me. And what we got is two impact guns. And if you take the little stem out and drill a hole there, you can coil up some wire and actually have the air hose line going to an air compressor. This again is the gas tank that would be for filling a NASCAR. And I do believe this is a smaller one for like maybe water or oil or something. But you got a handle here and the right and left hand side. So again, really cool detail stuff. Here we have some gas cans that they would use in racing as well as the regular conventional kind. And a smaller one here, maybe from a vintage car. It's just too bad there is a mold mark right where it says gas. <laughs> And I also have an oil can as well as a smaller one, which went with this set. But take a look at the top of the oil can. That's pretty cool. That really reminds me of the old school ones with the tin top. Here I've got a vise, which would mount on a bench. This thing is really cool. And I also have the handlebars and the front wheel for the bicycle that comes in AMT's 1929 Ford Woody kit. 
Here we have all the different types of jacks. And I'm missing the little handles that come off here, but that's okay. I know where they are. <laughs> They're in with the tools from before. But there we have the scissor style jack. This one here comes from AMT's 1953 Ford pickup truck. And what we have is a jack handle as well as a, a bar in here. And this is supposed to hook into this. Um, I forget what the bar is, but it's wrapped together like that. Maybe a tire iron or something, a lug wrench. Something to that effect. This is a little bottle jack. This one comes in the 1934 Ford pickup truck from AMT. And I do believe these ones are from the Mercury kit. But I actually have a real one of these. And uh, it's red. And these were the bumper jacks that they used to have back in the 60s. And these things were notorious for jacking your car up and then skidding out on the bottom plate. So if you have a real one, I don't think they recommend you ever using those anymore. Speaking of jacks, some model kits even include these heavy-duty floor jacks in multiple pieces, which actually operate and help you lift up a car. So here we have the sides of the jack as well as the head here and the, the handle of the jack. And I've built one up and it looks like this. This is a different one, of course, being smaller. But again, you've got that jack handle. And unfortunately, the platform doesn't lift up on this one, but the handle does fold down. So again, that is pretty cool. Here we have the ramps that come with the 1965 Chevrolet Chevelle model kit. And you get two in the kit. I just have room to show one. But there's basically the support for the ramp and the ramp itself, which will glue right into here. And you would put one of each of these ramps under each of the front wheels or back wheels, whatever you want to ramp up, and then put your guy underneath there. Here's another cool little thing. These are creepers. You know, you uh, lie on these and then you roll underneath the car. There's a little pillow for your head, and then the bench in here. Now these are all chrome plated, so what you would do is paint inside here uh, red or something, black or whatever, that's supposed to be that rubber that you're lying on. And then it doesn't really have wheels, but it sort of has the illusion of wheels. But overall, these little creepers are kind of cool. Here we have these wonderful oxygen acetylene tanks from the AMT 1953 Ford pickup truck. And they're beautiful. They even have oxygen and acetylene molded in on the labels on the bottles, as well as these beautiful gauges. But you have to be careful because you can break them off on the little tips. And you also get the cutting torch end. And if you want to hook up your gas lines on here, remember they come out the bottom of the gauges. And they're going to have to hook up one on each side of here and here, which is a really tiny, tiny point. So maybe some crazy glue or something will get them on. You could drill them in, but that might be a little bit risky. But overall, these are beautiful. And even on the back, they even have the details there, just like the real things. And I really love these things. Although I don't really like how they're just sitting in the back of the pickup truck, you know, right in the air. So you would need to make a proper welding cart for these. Now you can't have a good safe garage unless you have a few of these kicking around. These of course are fire extinguishers and there's all different types. This is one of the large bodies with the flexible hoses. I do believe these are earlier like in the 20s and 30s. And then you got the more modern ones with the pressurized cylinder tanks and whatnot. But again these are everywhere in almost every model kit so they're not very hard to find. Now, if you want to jack up a car and you don't have the jack stands, you can also use these cinder blocks. These things you can only find in AMT's 1950 Ford convertible kit. I have one upside down. You can see there's mold marks on here. These you have to remove in order to get the blocks looking nice and flat. But I painted these up years ago and uh, they're still pretty cool. I think I might repaint them a little bit just to make this look more like cinder blocks. But uh, overall, these are wonderful. Here's another set of items that are in a lot of these model kits. And these are various trophies from AMT and other manufacturers. And like, look at, you got cups, you've got V's with a victory wreath in the middle. I got this rabbit in here as well. Then there's the Model T mounted up, or 
32 Ford, I think, mounted up on this display stand. You also have the cross checkered flags and these different cups. And then there's even like a, a first place plaque as well. So again, a lot of cool things you can display with your model or even just have on a back shelf in your garage diorama. Here's another bunch of cool things that you find in a lot of the model car kits are actual little scaled down versions of model cars. So here we've got like an 80s Corvette. I'm not sure what this is. It's, uh, I think it's just supposed to be a generic um, car. It almost looks like something from the uh, GM, what did they call it, contest? The future, uh, it's, it's like a GM group build thing they used to have back in the 60s. And uh, you could make a model car and then submit it to GM. I forget what that was called. I got a book about it. <laughs> anyway, you also have these little like Model A's. 32 Fords, and this is a 34 Ford pickup truck, and then I've got a 57 Chevy right here. <laughs> so again, all these little cool things that you add flavor to your garage diorama. Here's another thing that comes up in a lot of the kits. These are actually crash helmets and surfer helmets and all kinds of different race car helmets and cool things. I think this one comes in the AMT 55 Chevy kit. Not sure where this chrome surf helmet comes in from, but again, like a lot of little details that are all over the place. Just look for them on the parts trees. Another thing that pops up in the 1920s style kits are like these beer jugs. I think this is from the Beverly Hillbillies truck. And then you also have these two piece barrels, which are like almost everywhere. So again, look for this kind of stuff. Now I kept these in the bags because I don't want to lose them. Now, if you have a drill press and some spare time on your hands, you can make up cool items yourself, like these lights that my dad made. These are lanterns, actually, gas-style lanterns from the old days. And I do believe he used these on some of his fire truck models on the back for things like a 1920 fire truck, you know. But these are what he made, and uh, they're really cool. Shaped up. He even put on the proper top on there using a... I think he just carved these out. But again, really cool looking stuff. Just looks like the real lantern. You just need to paint the bottom and the top with like a forest kind of green like they would for camping. Another cool location for parts that are a little bit more unusual, maybe not for a garage per se, but what I have here is from the Chrysler kit, AMT's 32 Chrysler, and you've got a little suitcase with jewelry in it as well as one with money in it and a safe which even has an operational door now the one thing is i lost a little combo lock on here but uh, there's the safe so again a lot of cool stuff out there in model kit land for dioramas are you getting tired of this video and you just want to sit down and have a rest well we even have a bench and this is from the beverly hillbillies model kit this is the granny's bench and again, you can see the nice slats in here. This was a real chore to clean up all the seam lines in this thing. But again, the nice wood grain detail that I painted on here. This really adds to your diorama and gives your customers or your garage somewhere to sit. Or you can even just have the bench outside of the garage. Sometimes you can find these bits in other areas where you weren't really originally looking, like G-Scale Model Railroading. This is a wonderful little set of fences that I got from a friend of mine, and they just fit 125th scale perfectly. Like, check this out here. Here's Henry Ford and uh, the picket fence. So again, you can see the scaling is quite right and would look really cool on a diorama. Even some of these things are just decals on the decal sheet, but with spare parts and sprue and even some evergreen styrene, you can make up nice little fancy signs like this one for Ford parking only, which I do believe was just a decal in an AMT Corvette, <laughs> Corvette kit, in a Ford kit. What am I saying? Speaking of signage, here's another bunch of cool ideas that I had. This is a Ertl sign that I made up from one of the little parts trees had this little plaque in there. So I just added in a stock and a little round base to make it stand up. And then the AMT kits, some of them had these little trophy stands with a sign in here. There is an arm for this one, so it will stand up like a triangle. I just removed the arm because it's easier to hold it in the back or in the box. 
And you can also cut up and make your own little signage like this. So this was for like uh, five cars in a display that I had and telling everybody what they are. Cowabunga, surfer dudes! Here's a whole bunch of surfboards that I collected up over the years, including this big kahuna style. That's not a board, man! That's a pier! Anyway, I do believe these ones came from the monogram garbage truck. But again, really cool stuff. And if you don't have fins on the back of your board, you can just make your own, just like I did here using some Plastruct. So again, really gnarly, dude! Now, if you don't want anyone touching your cool model car, we have these stanchions. I do believe that's what they're called. And these also came in one of the AMT 1954 cars. But what it is, it's just a bar and it's got a hole in the top and you can put a string through there and have them laced down in between one another, just like what they have at the bank for controlling lines and all that kind of stuff. So now I'll organize all this stuff and put them in the drawers and anything else that I find along the way I will also put in there so that I have all my garage stuff ready to go when I need it for the diorama. Well I hope you enjoyed this initial video where we got to take a look at some of the garage things that I have and separate them out so that they're easy to find. And if you're building a garage diorama I suggest you do the same thing because those model car kits, they have tons of little tools and TV sets and little stuffed animal rabbit things because uh, like back in the 60s, that was the big thing to have these little things in your car to display when you went to a car show. And uh, AMT and Ravel and all those guys, they made those little pieces so you could do that. But in our modern age, we can collect all those little bits and do them for garage. So what do you have in your collection? Let us know in the comments down below. Do you have like the little wrenches or tools or the rabbits or the TVs or maybe you got some of the like Fujimi stuff with modern vacuum cleaner and all that other cool stuff. Let us know in the comments below. I'm actually kind of curious in this and I think if we all kind of do this, this could be a fun thing. So anyway, until next time everybody, Happy model building, and I hope you have some great success in your model car garage.